Hey guys, I've had a few requests to make a tutorial on how I made the PS3 background or the wavy thing or whatever you guys want to call it. So I thought I'd put this up here. It's really easy to do. Um, it's not nearly as complicated as you probably think it would be. And even if you don't know how to use 3D Studio Max, you can probably make one yourself. And here's an example of what it looks like when you're finished. So this is what we're going to be making. And it looks pretty similar to the PS3 version. So uh, let's get started then. Okay, the first thing I usually do is hide all my grids because they just get in the way. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make a plane in the top view. You're going to want to make sure that your units are set to the regular units, not inches or anything like that. Okay, so 132 by 40 works. And let's put a turbo smooth on there. So I've got the turbo smooth set to three for the viewport so you can get a good idea of what you're going to be creating. And six for render so it looks really smooth when it's finished. So right now is probably a good time to try to frame it up in your main window, your perspective window. So you're actually going to want to change your resolution now too. So go to your render settings and pick whichever resolution it's going to be in the end. I chose 1280 by 720. Now in, there, in your viewport, just make sure that you have show safe frames enabled. Now you can frame it up just so the, uh, the edges are hidden. All right, so the next modifier that I put on here was a wave. Okay, so put that down there. And my amplitude number one was seven. Number two I set at eight. And the wavelength is set to 132. So now you've got nice, really big waves. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I don't want to see the edges. So right about now, you're going to want to set up your time configuration. So click here. Now what I did was I set mine to 1,000 frames and 60 frames a second because that was a uh, perfect for After Effects because I was going to do some time warps and stuff like that. But for this, we'll just set it to 500 frames and 30 frames a second, and it'll look exactly like it was in the YouTube video. So right now we have to keyframe it so it's a perfect loop. So take that time slider and put it to the end and turn on auto key. Now change your phase to 0 0.998, not 1. Because if it was 1, it would actually not loop perfectly. This way, it's just before a full loop. And your set of frames can be looped as many times as you want, and it'll be seamless. Okay, so the next thing that I put on was a displacement map. So go down here and find displace. So I'm going to set it up before I even have a map. Set your displace to 22. Check this off. And I'm going to choose a map. So just choose a noise map. So the default settings aren't bad, but I think we're going to do a little bit better than that. So I'm going to drag it over to my material browser. You can open that up by pressing M. So the settings I used for this was 3 for the X and 0.5 for the Y. And the size was set to 14. 
So what this is for is so we have like a little bit of a ripple on top of the wave. So the way to animate this is similar to what we did with the wave, but we're actually animating the phase of a material. So here's what you want to do. Go to the middle of your timeline, turn on auto key, and set your phase to one. So when you scrub through here, you can see you've got like a nice ripple going on. So that if, if you look at the phase in your material browser, you can see that it's actually going from zero to one from the beginning to the middle of the animation. So now all you have to do is slide the, uh, slide the playhead to the end and change it to zero. So now what you have it doing is going from zero to one to zero. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but you need to make sure that your frames are set to linear Otherwise, it's going to ease into each key, and the animation is going to look wrong. So make sure that little symbol down there is set to linear before you do any keying. And the next thing I did was put a falloff map onto the object. So click on this and apply it to the object. Set everything to white. and check off self-illumination and put that to white also and all you need now is a falloff opacity map so click on that and choose falloff and the only thing you have to change is the falloff type to towards and away and that'll look really good when you render it last thing I did was I made an environment map which was that blue gradient thing that you saw. So go to your environment settings and choose a gradient ramp for the background. You might want to open up your material browser and drag it over there so you can play with it. Make sure it's an instance. So anything that you change in the material browser is going to be applied to the actual background. Make sure the mapping is set to screen and environment or else it won't look proper. You're also going to want to make sure that you rotate it here and just set that to 90. That way you got the light color at the top and the dark color at the bottom. You don't need the middle slider, so just drag that, drag that right off the screen. Now right click on your light color and edit properties. Click on the little white rectangle. Just choose whatever light color you want. So I'm going to do a bright red and I'm going to leave the bottom as black. All right, so let's do a test render and see what it looks like. You can actually hit F9 and it'll do a test render for you. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now all you have to do is check off active time segment so it does every frame. And down here, you choose whatever format you want. So you might want to choose AVI if, if you're just going to be putting it into YouTube. Or you can also just output it to PNGs with a transparent background, and then you can bring it into After Effects, like I did. That way, you can just put it over top of any background that you want. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with because I'm pretty sure you can do a lot more with it than what I did. So uh, have fun with it.